Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is this on? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. A, a few things that I want to address up front is, uh, again, um, gratitude for Brian for putting me in this position. Um, number two is this thing, this, this mask thing. So one thing that I know about COVID is I don't know shit about COVID. So that's why I wear it. So, but don't feel like you don't have to come up and, and speak and say hi. Um, I told Brian yesterday I'd give him a kiss just to prove it. So just feel like, just don't come up kissing me. <laughs> just Brian. Um, and then the, the last thing is that, um, I don't know if anybody in here does this, and I'll ask that question, but if, and whenever you do one of those uh, introduction um, exercises where everybody goes around and says something about themselves, is there anybody in here that as soon as you finish, you say, damn, I should have said that? <laughs> is there anybody else like that? Well, that's me every time. I'm like, damn, I should So I have an advantage because I'm up here now. So I can say um, a few things. The, the reason why I'm here is, for one, um, supporting Brian, right? He's my guy. I appreciate you, bro. Um, for two, improve my game. I'm coaching now. Um, and I got some great information yesterday. The implementation day was excellent. Um, I was only here for, for half of it because I had some closings. But the stuff that Tom talked about, every time I hear him speak, he gives me something else. And the one thing that really stuck with me is you get your power from those tough conversations with students that aren't doing well. You get your strength from those conversations. That's your superpower. And then you can use that in the future. So that's one nugget that I got yesterday that just reminded me. I got a few students that won't follow the instructions. And I, I need to go to them and have more conversations, figure it out, um, and that will help me grow in coaching. So that was a great, great thing. So I'm here for that. Um, and then um, lastly, just networking, right? Networking and content, content is king. Uh, I wanted to be able to do some podcasts. I want to you know, interview some other folks. So if anybody here wants to do some more content, I'm your guy, I'd love to do some stuff with you. So that is my redo of this morning. I didn't have my coffee yet. And like I said, I'm always that guy. I'm like, damn, I should have said that. So cool. How to utilize a meetup group to start coaching. I'm going to jump right into it. This was me. I did not want to be a guru. I didn't want to be that guy. Um, I'm actually somewhat of an introvert. Um, I, I do well in small groups. Um, and I just didn't want, like, I didn't want to have to live my life in front of a camera. And what I'm learning from my mentor is that I don't necessarily have to. Um, I'm actually going to change some things. I'm going to focus on one channel. Um, and for me, that'll most likely be podcasting. Um, and I'll still do some lives, but I don't have to live my life in front of a camera. I just didn't want to be a guru. And that's why I never wanted to be a coach. And then Brian just told you the story. But that is exactly what happened. I came to support him. I met him at the Orlando event for Wholesaling Inc. It didn't work out. He asked me, and I even gave him like five other people to contact in Atlanta to run that group. And I know, Vanessa, I know you probably remember this, because I was like, I don't think I want to do it. But I did it, and that was the best thing for me. That goes back to another principal foundation of my mentor's coaching is get uncomfortable being, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And so doing that has really helped. It's put me in this room. It's put me in other rooms. If I did not make that choice to take on that meetup group, I wouldn't be here with you guys today. So I'm super, super happy that I did it. I sucked it up uh, and got comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, and how I got started, you know, REI Live. Th this was my entry into coaching. Um, I initially was thinking like, oh yeah, I'll just do some deals. People will bring me stuff to the meetup groups. And they brought me a bunch of junk that I didn't want to work on. And so I started thinking, all right, what else should I do? And, and eventually, we started coaching. So in August of 2019, I started coaching. So I, I took it over March 2019. By August, I started coaching. And I started with uh, an open house um, that we invited some people um, that you know I was in the front of the room. I had great speakers. I had Tom speak. I had uh, Eddie Speed speak. I had um, Tag speak, right? Um, I've had, who else? There's a bunch, uh, well, Brent Daniels, I think, was a speaker on this one. So we filled the room, 160 people. And so it was just an easy transition into, you know, hey guys, if you want to learn how to do deals like I've done, come out and, and learn um, a little bit about the coaching program. And so it was a really, really good transition. Um, power of the meetup groups. Um, the very first one that I actually took over 
uh, was the one with um, Joe McCall. Joe McCall spoke. That was my first time meeting him in person. Super happy, super nervous at the same time. Um, but Brian was there to hold my hand and, and get me through that. We filled the room. We filled the room a lot of times. And um, you know, you can pivot. You can do different things. You can, you know, turn that that meetup group, um, you know, into a, another, you know, smaller networking group. Or um, there's just there's so much you can do. We're building our buyers list. We're building our email list. Um, we're, we're getting people that are coming to the room. You're, you're the authority in the front of the room, and so they naturally want to learn from you. So it was a very easy transition, and this was the power of having the meetup group, and it just gave me an easy launching point for a coaching program. The challenge is, you gotta run it like a business. Like you have, it's a real business. Like if I didn't do my marketing, if I didn't put the ads out in different areas or tell people about the next event, people weren't gonna show up. Um, there was upfront costs. I don't know if, 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 if I look like it, but I, I like to look good, feel good. And so I didn't want my meetup group at the back of a restaurant bar. I chose the Westin. So at, before I entered the room, I was $1,000 was coming out of my pocket to host my event there. And I wanted to look nice and feel nice and have a nice atmosphere. Great speaking equipment, microphones, et cetera. Like it, it, it takes money um, to, to host these. And, and you can do them um, you know, at a lower cost. That's just how I wanted to do things. Um, and so it's funny enough that, um, you know, when, when COVID started and we started going virtual, uh, I was like, damn, I can't meet people in person. But I'm putting that thousand dollars back in my pocket. So that was nice. It's virtual now. I don't have to pay the West in a thousand dollars every time uh, I, I entered the room. So that that's been that's been cool. Booking speakers, continuing to make sure that we have in, um, uh, engaging, um, interesting people to come speak. Um, that, that's a challenge, right? I have to make sure that um, I'm reaching out to them uh, far enough in advance and I'm getting people there. And, and um, there are some challenges. It's not all gumdrops and lollipops hosting events, but there's so much power in it, guys. Why should you start one? If you don't have one already, um, it's an ease. It's an it's a ease of starting. And, and by me starting with the REI Live brand, it was basically I had a meetup out of a box. I just showed up, Brian said, do this, do that, do this, get this equipment, that equipment, that equipment, and host. And, and I'm gonna be there with you in the beginning. So it was great. It was a it was very easy transition for me to just start the meetup group and then eventually start the coaching. Uh, it was natural entry. I was already the authority in the local market, networking and marketing. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's super helpful because every month we're building our list. And so if I have another product or a mini course or something to sell, like I, every month I know that I'm building that list because I'm bringing engaging speakers. Yes, I did a, a Aria Live Atlanta from last night from this hotel uh, because I usually do it third Thursday, so I had Zach Booth of Driving for Dollars Mastery speak um, at my, for my virtual Aria Live Atlanta last night, so that was great. Um, and I'm able to do that on the fly, uh, especially because everything is virtual now. So. Building the email uh, list. Testimonials from the front of the room. I think that's one of the biggest things. So as I help students do deals, I can every month say, hey, you know, come to the front of the room, talk about your experience. And now I have a room full of people that I've now seen and heard from somebody that they can touch and feel and look at and ask questions that has worked with me to do deals and is accomplishing their goals. So that is the biggest, biggest, that was one of the biggest parts. Um, you know, and you can do the, the selfie, like um, go tell us or so tell us, um, you know, that type of stuff for your testimonial videos. But testimonial videos or testimonials live from the front of the room at an event are super, super powerful. Uh, coaching in the beginning. So I want to get into this. I want to I roll into kind of how, how the journey went for me. Um, I did everything. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends that are wholesalers. Not that many high-level coaching friends. Um, I have mentors, but as I talked to some of my buddies that were kind of getting going, I was, you know, I was like uh, hearing different things, like, "Oh, you should do a subscription model." Started off, it was five hundred dollars a month. 
By month two, the cars were declining. So that didn't work. And so we had to pivot. I did high ticket. Then I couldn't get as many people in. Then I went to low ticket. Um, then I have a buddy that's doing very well uh, in webinars, six figures a month on a webinar. And that's amazing. I was like, that's time to do a webinar. Uh, and I started that. But then I stopped getting as many people coming to the webinar. So I've, I've actually transitioned. I'm going back to high ticket. But when I say high ticket, it's kind of mid ticket. It's like 5K. I, I haven't really pin, pin the price down, but it's going to be around that with the ongoing subscription for um, ongoing support um, and then affiliate, affiliate money. So um, I do uh, do some affiliate stuff with, um, with Deal Machine. They're great. David Leco is super, super helpful. Those guys out, out there, um, are, they're really helpful and uh, show you kind of snapshots and stuff like that. Coaching by the numbers. Look, I, I and, you know, I felt bad because I was in here yesterday with Tom Crow and he was talking about he he showed us KPIs he had his you know his um, his his numbers and conversions and how many people and I just don't have all that yet but I'm working to get it uh, so I was able to quickly just look at my Stripe account look at Chase Merchant account uh, which I started payment processing there and then my ongoing subscription so we're a little bit over six figures in a year coaching and and that's only by having started it with the meetup group. I wouldn't have done those numbers. And for me, like, that's not a lot. I, should, I know I should be thankful and grateful, and I, and I really am, but when I get into this business, um, a little bit about my, my wholesaling, I did six figures first year. By third year, I did seven figures, and I did it again year four. We'll continue that, that path. Uh, you know, I wanna do you know, eight figures, hell, in, in wholesaling, right? Um, and so for me, coaching is restarting as a new business. And so I'm proud of what we've done, but you know, let's let's do more. Like, what's what's the next what's the next frontier? So I'm super excited about that. But that's one thing I need a bookkeeper for for the coaching and really to identify because um, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants as far as the coaching business goes. I haven't built that foundation yet, but it's definitely very important to do so. Lessons I've learned from the first year in coaching. I, you can kind of disregard this. This is kind of more so. What, um, you know, lessons I've learned from working with students, but the biggest lesson that I've learned from coaching uh, in the first year is, is it's a business. It's a, it's a real business, right? It's, it's a business that involves marketing. Uh, the fulfillment for me comes somewhat naturally um, because I'm just able to show people what to do, a business process that works, that's repeatable. Uh, we send more offers uh, and they're able to do deals. But I'm also learning a little bit about coaching better as, as far as how I dig in with the students that aren't having much success. So I'm, I'm improving there, but I just, I just thought that you know, people would come and say, hey, I want to learn. Uh, or more people uh, would, um, would be attracted to, to me naturally uh, to want to come in. Because I have a, a decent following, but it's, it was hard to fill the webinars. It was uh, hard to uh, get people to fill out applications. And, and that's what I'm learning. Marketing is everything. Marketing is everything. Um, and so there you go. Marketing is freaking everything uh, with this coaching business. Um, and uh, same way with the, the monthly meetup, but it's been great. Um, engaging versus via social media, consistency is super important. Dominate one channel, go live. That's the easiest thing for me. I'll go live on Facebook and then I'm trying to do the YouTube through StreamYard and everything. Uh, but that's one thing that I have been doing pretty consistently. My focus going forward will be podcasting. Right now I'm working with Tom uh, Schwab from Interview Valet to be on other people's podcasts. If I can do it for free, you know, I might, <laughs> I might want to get on some more podcasts um, as well and, and really focus on that and having um, that be a primary channel and then continue to um, potentially have my own, uh, right? So that is, that's what I'm trying to focus on. But look, the most important metric, and we're getting through this fast, guys, is the success of your students. Tom said it yesterday. Um, he's reiterated that for me. Brian said it in the beginning, you're trying to do all this stuff and funnels and hacking and sites and all this stuff. He said, bro, you need to learn how to be a coach first. You need to get your student success first. Um, and then Tom followed that up and reminded me again, focus on that. I'm super excited. One of my favorite students, one of my most successful students, um, Chris Campbell, um, he uh, is now the owner of Keegley Atlanta. Uh, so he's partnered up with those guys at Keegley, and he said, you can actually maybe see it, that he 110% wouldn't be able to have bought that franchise if it was not for the coaching that he got from me. 
Um, he, was, he was working with some other uh, coaches, other programs that we've both been a part of, but it was he, to get off that roller coaster and get to a point where he was consistently having 50K months and able to purchase um, that, that franchise was from the work that I did with him to really focus on what the most important metric I think for his business should have been was how many offers did you get out last week? And once he got that up to 20, 30 offers, once he you know, stopped hand dialing and started focusing on the dollar, stopped going to every appointment and leading first with his offers, he started to have some consistency in his business. So I'm super, super excited about that and I'm really trying to focus in on how I can work with the students more that are struggling and get them to where they need to be because that is the most important metric for me is their success. Um, and this is it. This is, um, this is the first iteration. I have not released this yet because I want them to slim it down. I think it's a little bulky. But the Send More Offers coaching program, you may haven't heard of it much yet, but you will in the future. This is my methodology. I want my students to keep their leads in the dollar, stop sending them to a CRM. I want them to power dial. Um, I've given them a script. I want them to lead first with their offer and follow up until they get signed. That's my coaching program. You know, kind of in a nutshell, I'm, hoping my, I'm helping my students uh, get their first deal without a seller appointment in a repeatable way by sending more offers. That is what I coach. That's why I teach. That is my presentation. If you guys want to reach me, simmeroffers.com. Um, there's some profile links at the bottom. I would love to chat with you guys. Uh, this has been great. Questions for Brandon. <laughs> Questions about meetup groups for Brandon. Go ahead. So I've had hey, the pleasure of meeting you and spending a little bit of time with you guys. You guys are killing it. Thank um, you, thank you. I do a meetup here as well. Uh, my question is, at what point, and you may have answered this, I may have missed it, but at what point did you make the decision to commit to coaching? Yeah, great question. Uh, I, was on the, I was on that fence for a bit, um, but I want to say we were having conversations over the summer, so I, I took over REI Live, the March event, so March, April, May. June and July, I was starting to have those conversations because I wasn't, I, I was telling people to bring me deals or like, hey, we can partner, we can JV, I'll help you get through these deals and it just wasn't giving me anything. It wasn't, it wasn't allowing me opportunities to work with, with some of the uh, folks that were coming to the events. So over that summer, I started having conversations about uh, you know, the ballroom, um, high ticket uh, coaching, um, and I was gonna partner with somebody uh, to do that. Um, and then I think by August, we went on and said, hey, somebody had the idea of having a, co uh, a coaching open house, inviting people, and then just you know, presenting an opportunity, um, and it was a low ticket subscription, it was, you know, $500. Uh, but it was, it was, it took, what, six months for me to fully, fully commit. Um, but then I, at that point, I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to approach it, what the model was gonna be. Um, but I learned very early by having the meetup group that, you know, if you're thinking that you're just going to, you know, do a bunch of JV deals with all the people that are coming into your events, it's, it's not, really going to happen as you get a bunch of junk and then you find yourself trying to chase down those leads and you're wasting time. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, it, it, it made sense for me to start to do some coaching and, and the one-to-many model is what I'm doing now and, um, you know, doing weekly calls and supports and, and stuff. So, great question. Thank you. Any other questions about hosting a meetup and leveraging that to coach? I just have a general question about your coaching rather yes. than the meetup. Did you, did your existing business suffer at all as you were building the new coaching business? Um, I know you got a lot of benefit because you were able to do more deals through other people and students and so forth. Did that affect your core business at all? Yeah, um, not too much, but I know it did. I, I know it did. It affected my focus. Um, there were things and metrics or yeah, there were trends that I probably could have caught sooner um, as I've been building, you know, continue to build my team and my, and my wholesaling business. But uh, I, I haven't talked to sellers in a few years now. So um, the acquisitions is, is still been humming along. I have a strong assistant. And so the, the team is pretty much self-sufficient, but I'm sure that there are opportunities that I've missed um, by, you know, spending time uh, with the meetup group and, and, and coaching um, that I could have caught on to. Um, there was something, like for instance, I had an assistant that I could have had 
I had them sending mess text messages and I was trying to figure out how we can get people on the phone faster. And I didn't think to just have him start answering some of those calls as he was sending them. Because I was thinking about Pat Live and Live Answer or trying to loop them into the dialer or set an appointment for my acquisition manager. I was like, why didn't I just think to have him take those incoming calls? And I think it was because I was so wrapped up in my coaching business. So I know there's some things that I probably miss or trends or things that I probably could have been more focused in on, but um, not, not drastically. Um, but I know there is effect because it's a business. It's a business. Yeah. And that was, that's a huge mistake that I made and a lot of people make. So it's a great question. I tried to warn him about that a lot. <laughs> uh, what was the most effective thing you did to build the group uh, in terms of the meetup? And, you know, was it Facebook, Instagram? What was it? Yeah, the, the speakers. The speakers. If I got a good speaker, that was, you know, super engaging, like people were going to come. Um, but consistent marketing on different platforms is, is super important. Um, Facebook groups, meetup.com, bigger pockets, you know, your own social presence is great. But the speaker really, for, for me, has brought out people. Um, and, and, you know, I know that I should probably be engaging the folks that come a little bit more so that they come regardless of the speaker. But honestly, we have seen drastic swings in, you know, who showed up based on the speaker. So getting, getting great speakers to come um, and host events is, it has been the biggest thing to, to grow the group. Yeah, Lou, the REI Live model is based around finding an influencer who doesn't have, they're, they're not there to, it's, you know, the RIA, the old traditional RIA model where you have a speaker come in and they have a product or a service to sell and they're pitching something, sending people to the back of the room. The REI Live model is really the antithesis of that. It really like highlights, honestly, like you mentioned Brent Daniels, a lot of the young, Tom Kroll, Joe McCall, even a lot of the kind of the younger guys in the, in the, in the industry who are there to really increase their own influence because mm -hmm. they have something to sell in a, in a great way that, Sh Sean, I know you're going to talk about it later, in a great way that is not selling and sending people to the back of the room, but you're still selling, but you're not doing it in a kind of like a, maybe an old, older way. Zach, do you have a question? Yes. So I think you answered one of them. So you have speakers, but you don't have selling speakers. Or it is a silent funnel, as we call it, where they push them through. Um, and we changed our RIA like that three years ago. We stopped all the selling speakers. But um, do you do boot camps? Do you do one day or three day workshops, boot camps, events? Do you do any of that for your group? Yeah, I haven't. Um, and I should, right? Um, you know, I think that, that there's a lot of power in that. Um, but I hadn't. It was, you know, a lot of the meetup groups of the RIAs in Atlanta, like they're doing events every other week. But because I also was running the business and different things, I just, it was like get to the next meeting yeah. and then continue well, on. I would encourage it, man. I mean, they're your, they're your pack. They're following you. We just did one. 25 people did almost 180,000 in a weekend. 25 That's people. That's amazing. So That's amazing. They're, they're following you for a reason, you know, so. For sure. No, I appreciate it. Any one last question for Brandon and guys, we're about to break for lunch. We're about to do a picture, so don't don't anybody go anywhere. Last question for Brandon. Great job, Brandon. Uh, any best practices? Anything you can share from an affiliate marketing perspective that you've seen has worked well for you? Yes, um, in the modules, if you do um, your coaching with like uh, Kajabi or Teachable, like I put them in the modules. Um, you know, for sure. As far as um, you know. Uh, the the mini wins, if you will, like Tom talked about, I kind of follow his model with that. Um, I try to do um, videos with the owners of those companies or a demo, um, but um, you know, put it in your bio, et cetera. But I think the biggest thing was just making sure that I had it in the actual modules because prior to that. You know, I would talk and I would show them, you know, how to use these things, but I didn't have hard links within the modules. Once I added that, I did start to see a lift uh, in the um, affiliate subscriptions. A bit, a bit. I should do more of it. I should do some more. I'm learning. I'm learning, bro. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, guys.